Oh. Hello. Now, animal camouflage is something which is widespread in the animal kingdom. Loads of different taxa have adopted camouflage to deceive their predators, to remain inconspicuous for predators. But one thing we've always got to remember is that these camouflage patterns aren't there to deceive us, they're there to deceive the predators. So, one thing we've always got to remember then is that loads of different animals see in different ways. They have different, what we call, photoreceptors in their eyes, and that'll affect what their colour vision is like. Us humans are what we call trichromats. We have three different colour receptors. We've got red, green and blue. And their absorbent spectra give us the full spectrum of colours that we see in nature today. Some animals, in fact most mammals, are slightly worse than us. They're dichromats. That means they've only got two photoreceptors. So that means most mammals are usually red-green colour blinds, which normally doesn't matter because a lot of mammals are nocturnal, which means they don't really use their colour vision much anyway. And then you get into animals which are slightly better than us in colour vision. You've got the tetrachromats, and they've got four different colour receptors. And they include animals like some fish, but mostly the birds. Birds have really, really good colour vision, which can see, well, all the colours that we see, and even into the UV side of the spectrum as well. Now, I've talked about there being variations between different species when it comes to their colour vision. There's also variations within species, with the New World monkeys being an excellent example. In species such as the squirrel monkey, which is an adorable animal from South America, all the males are dichromats, but some of the females are trichromats. And just by messing around with the genes of these squirrel monkeys, you can turn one individual straight from a dichromat into a trichromat. So this shows that colour vision can be determined by just small changes in the genes present in different individuals. Okay, come on, enough of these cute animals. But, herein lies the problem. If there are still dichromatic um, monkeys out there, then surely then it must be useful for something. And that's what researchers this year are starting to uncover. They think that dichromatism is very useful at detecting camouflaged animals. So how do you go about testing such a hypothesis then? Well, researchers at the University of Exeter are doing something a little bit different. They've set up computer games, citizen science computer games. And the basis of it is very, very simple indeed. What they've done is they've shown a picture of either a night jar or a plover egg in its natural settings, and members of the public have got to click the photo when they spot the camouflaged organism. And these photos were altered so the subjects could view them under dichromatic and trichromatic colour conditions. So the idea here is that colour interferes with the animal's ability to detect camouflage objects, and that dichromats are better at differentiating these contrasts on an animal's body, which makes them better at detecting camouflage prey items. So what do the results of the study show? Well, unfortunately, trichromats did better every single time. But of course, the subjects themselves were trichromats. They were us humans, weren't they? So perhaps, you know, adding a, an unnatural looking filter to give a dichromatic um, image put the humans off a little bit. One of the most interesting results from this experiment, though, was that the dichromats appeared to learn what a night jar, say, looked like much faster than the trichromats. That means they're able to form search images a lot easier, especially when those um, search images involve learning differences in pattern contrasts. But this is an expanding field of research, so hopefully in the coming years we'll get more of an idea on the differences between dichromats and trichromats in their abilities to break camouflage. For the moment, I'll see you next time. Oh, hello. <laughs> Didn't see you there. Did you enjoy the video?
Good. Well, if you did, you know what to do then, don't you? Subscribe! <laughs> what you need to do is press that button there. Just there. And if you want to see another video, just go over there. The world's your oyster. <laughs>